Hi everyone. Welcome to Alterna Vida. I hope you're all doing well. Thank you for your time today. Another post today about wheat germ and specifically both wheat germ and wheat germ oil. And I am just going to read the first introduction and the benefits, the highest attributes of this particular study that you can take home with you because it was um, a little complicated and that they use six different, it was a rat study. It was in 2017 by the British Journal of Nutrition. And what made it a little difficult is they use six different groups of rats with six different diets and no variables, some variables, and both variables, wheat germ and wheat germ oil. So wheat germ is a byproduct of the flour milling industry. And the other particular thing of note, it was using fructose only. Wheat germ is a byproduct of the flour milling industry. So let me just read the title here. Wheat germ and wheat germ oil alleviates insulin resistance and lowers insulin. Wheat germ is a byproduct of the flour milling industry. During the milling process, the germ is separated from the bran and starch. The germ is the most valuable part of the wheat, making up about two and a half percent of its weight. And it's important in the food processing industry due to its high nutritional value. And like everything else beneficial in food, it's usually stripped off and then sold as a commodity. It is a rich source of vitamins, minerals, fiber, and proteins. And I should, that's mainly due to profit, profit loss, shelf life, and in particular that um, they really don't care what you eat. And they has this very specific group of people Wheat germ is particularly high in tocopherols and B-complex vitamins. Its protein contains high concentrations of amino acids, especially essential ones like lysine, methionine, and threonine. By the way, they would feed pigs better than they feed you, so I'm just going to throw that in there as well. Wheat germ helps prevent and they actually know how to make food less healthy. So I'm going to throw that in there as well, because that leads to more profit. Wheat germ helps prevent heart diseases, cancers, and diabetes. It, because they all these industries, slush funds, lobbyists, they all feed each other. So when one profits, they all profit. It also helps reduce obesity and slow the aging process. Wheat germ contains as much as 10% oil, which is used in many products. Wheat germ oil is extracted from the germ of the wheat kernel. Wheat germ oil is a beneficial source of essential fatty acids, protein, minerals, and is high in vitamins A, D, E, and B. From the last article, you learned that Without these, there was a major um, increase in malnutrition, berry, berry, um, pellagra, and anemia. Wheat germ oil is considered a natural antioxidant due to its high vitamin E content, ten, content which inhibits inflammation. Wheat germ oil can lower oxidative stress, improve lipid metabolism, and decrease blood sugar in cholesterol levels. <clears throat> Metabolic disturbances refer to a state character characterized by at least three cardiovascular risk factors, hyperglycemia, dyslipidemia, obesity, fat storage, and hypertension. This condition involves oxidative stress, insulin resistance, and chronic inflammation. The aim of this study was to analyze wheat germ and investigate the possible 
protective effects of wheat germ powder and oil on rats fed a high fat and high fructose diet. So it was from the British Journal of Nutrition in 2017. And interestingly, now they are specifically looking at fructose as well as um, other studies I've been looking at. They, they are studying the effects of all different types of sugars, sucrose, glucose, fructose, um, allulose, um, what are some of these other new types of sugars that they're beginning to put in foods? Anyway, they're breaking them down to see the specific effects, as does this one. <clears throat> so wheat germ and wheat germ oil showed significant reductions in blood glucose, serum lipid profiles, liver and kidney function markers, TNFA, leptin, that's key, and resistin while increasing glutathione and enzyme levels. So the enzymes they helped produce were antioxidant en enzymes. And what, <clears throat> what is the particular component that helps induce autophagy? And that, <clears throat> sorry, that is spermidine, a naturally occurring polyamine in various foods, including wheat germ. It plays a crucial role in cellular functions such as growth pro proliferation and differentiation. In wheat germ, spermidine is present as part of its nutritional profile. Spermidine has gained attention for its potential health benefits, particularly in producing, promoting autophagy, a cellular process that helps maintain cellular health by degrading and recycling damaged cellular components. This process is associated with various anti-aging and disease prevention efforts. And this cell cycling process is critical for healthy aging, and in particular in some very crucial um, immune system gut immune system problems, namely IBD. Without appropriate intervention, autophagy decreases with age, reducing cellular function, and research shows that spermidine helps with anti-aging, promotes cell renewal, induces autophagy and mitochondrial function, and extends lifespan. And all that is true, and I will be sharing that study specifically on aging at some point. So the interesting thing about this particular study is that it was fructose specific. And then um, <clears throat> okay, so then it goes on to tell what happened to the rats after they began eating the fructose. And then after they added the wheat germ and the wheat germ oil. So the groups fed the high fat and high fructose supplemented with wheat germ powder or oil showed significant reductions in blood glucose, serum lipid profiles, liver and kidney function markers, TNFA, leptin, and resistin while increasing glutathione and um, antioxidant enzyme levels compared to the positive control group. So based on these results, it can be recommended that the consumption of wheat germ powder and oil may be beneficial for individuals suffering from high glucose triglycerides, total cholesterol levels, as well as for reducing inflammatory responses. Controlling diabetes and insulin resistance can be achieved by modulating inflammatory cytokines and adipokines. <clears throat> 
so in further down in the how it works, I give the um, the name of the person who name of the researchers who are responsible for that statement. So when they had the high fat and high fructose diet, the rats showed a significant reduction in the activity of glutathione and antioxidant enzymes, along with a significant increase in leptin, TNFA, and resistant compared to the negative control group. In contrast, the groups fed the high fat and high fructose supplemented with wheat germ and wheat germ oil showed a significant increase in glutathione. And then <clears throat> the levels of leptin, resistant, and TNFA were closer to the values of the negative control group compared to the positive control group at the end. <clears throat> so it led to a significant increase of the activity of glutathione, which is a good thing because fructose is a toxin and antioxidant enzymes, which shows that it helped reduce the oxidation of the sugar combined with the high fat. So it also increased the glutathione in the brain. And um, It improved lipid profiles, reduced blood glucose levels, inflammatory cytokines, and lowered insulin. So adipokines are proteins secreted by adipose tissue. Some contribute to an obesity-related low-grade state of inflammation or to the development of metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and atherosclerosis. And starting from the fourth week, some of the mice started gaining more weight than others. And that was the ones on the high fat, high sugar diet compared to the control. And it also had an impact on how much they ate. The high fat, high sugar diet also caused the mice to have more fat and less lean muscle compared to the control. The mouse on mice on the high fat, high sugar had higher blood sugar. And after getting the shot of glucose or the glucose test, the high fat sugar mice still had higher blood sugar levels levels compared to the controls. The amount of sugar in their blood over time was also higher. And adding whole grains to their diets from the wheat germ reduced how much insulin they needed. And then the high fat sugar diet made the mice have higher levels of certain fats while wheat germ increased a different type of fat. but not in the high fat sugar group. The high fat sugar diet also affected how their heart and liver cells worked, but adding wheat germ appeared to balance those effects. And the wheat, adding the wheat germ reduced the amount of fat around their organs and lowered, lowered their need for insulin. Okay, the high fat sugar diets decreased lean mass and increased fat mass by 32% compared to control. So after 11 weeks, they began doing the glucose tolerance test. In the high fat sugar diet had 23% 
higher baseline blood glucose compared to the control. Okay, so I'm not going to read the individual, other individual parameters aside from the glutathione, the inducing aut autophagy, the leptin, the effects on leptin, and the effects on insulin resistance. So, um, how does it work? It, it worked by controlling diabetes and insulin resistance by modulating inflammatory cytokines and adipokines. It reduced blood glucose, inflammatory cytokines, increased antioxidant enzymes, and increased um, glutathione, and it, there was also a reduction in leptin, inflammatory markers, and resistant. And they may, the results may be due to the antioxidants, phenols, and flavonoids, which protect unsaturated fats in the body from oxidation. This aligns with reported findings that oral supplementation of wheat germ oil significantly increase the activity of antioxidant enzymes, GPX and SOD, superoxide dismutase, can't remember the name of the other one, compared to the positive control. So the wheat germ was from Oklahoma red winter wheat, and they added to the control Ten percent. The wheat germ diets were adjusted to have the same macronutrient composition, and this study used both wheat germ and/or wheat germ oil, and it was conducted for twelve weeks. So that's some very good news about wheat germ, and there is much more to come particularly on aging, autophagy, specific gut conditions, um, one uh, antiviral activity, and I'm sure probably more after that just based on the basic nutrition. But um, what I've been learning through this is that I was surprised to learn that a very high processed flowers were used up to as early as 3,000 years ago. That is something I did not know. I thought that was a modern phenomenon that occurred after steel rolling, steel Mill, steel rolling mill milling process began in the seven, late 1780, 1790, something like that. But that's not true. Um, there were some forms of highly processed wheat, and they were primarily consumed by um, wealthy people. So there was always two classes of foods between the rich and the poor. So that led me to realize that that probably is and um, probably plays a part in the discrepancies, historical discrepancies in conditions like diabetes and cancer. Is something I really didn't think of in the past why there would be a discrepancy and that's probably why because different people eat different types of wheat just like different people eat different types of rice and some people could afford sugar and some people could not 
Some people could afford the um, highly processed flour, some people could not. And uh, the unprocessed version was definitely, definitely more healthy than the processed ver versions, even way back then. So that answered a lot of historical discrepancies for me as to um, especially some very famous people who could not control their appetite and uh, probably ended up succumbing to the effects of uh, diabetes, obesity, malnutrition, and everything that went along with it. Okay, everyone, that's pretty good news about wheat germ and wheat germ oil. Uh, again, if you're gluten sensitive, you shouldn't have any problems with the oil, according to the U.S. FDA. Wheat germ oil is gluten-free, and the um, refining process typically removes all gluten proteins from the wheat germ oil. However, it's possible to contain trace amounts. But that's up to you, and I would speak to your doctor regardless if you want to try it and you have a condition like celiac. But that reminds me, there is more on wheat germ and treating specific gut diseases like celiac. And that will be coming up very shortly. Okay, everyone, have a great day. Thanks again for your time. I'll see you next time. Bye.